First, you get caught stealing a t-shirt from the mall. Then you steal binoculars from the park and lie about it to my face. Now you've taken Laura's cigarettes? You let the raptors get to us because you wanted to smoke? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ. That's the dialogue, ladies and gentlemen, award-winning. This is Jurassic Park, the game from Telltale from 2011. It's not a good game. That's why nobody mentions it. That's why all you hear is stuff about uh, Walking Dead, because, yeah, stick with that. But this is Achievement Guidebook, so it's all about getting easy achievements. These are easy, and I'm going to walk you through the entire game for the most part. Uh, seven to nine hours is what you're looking at in order to get all of your achievements. It's not bad. The, the game is, and we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun, maybe. But, yeah, so strap in. I got some mechanics to explain first. Here we go. Here are the game mechanics. So there's a few things you need to know before we start hunting for achievements. Yes, this is one big, long, quick time event game. And there's also a ranking system. That ranking system is why you have gold there. We just completed the prologue, as you saw up there. That gold emblem will pop up whenever you have a sequence of uh, quick time events. And then it'll go away when you're done with that particular sequence. Ranking only matters because there are some areas where we need to have no mistakes in order to get achievements. So if you ever go down to a silver ranking, uh, then you're in trouble. You basically just can't miss any timed button presses. But you don't need to get gold medals all the time, only on the sequences that require no mistakes. There's only about three per level. Autosave will help you out. That's that symbol right there. When you see the autosave symbol, that means you're going to return back to that point. So if you mess up at this point, you can go back to there. So when you do miss, You'll see a little red X, and your character will either immediately die, or their ranking will go down regardless. This is the part where you have to exit out of the game. Do not hit A to continue with your game or X if you're on PlayStation. You need to quit the game. There is no return to main menu. If you exit from the game menu, well, you're still going to exit out of the game completely. So this is what you need to do every time this happens. Every time you die and see that dying screen, especially for Chapter 1, you need to exit out of the game, load your game, and go back in. You don't always need to cancel your deaths this way, but you need to do it for episode one because there's an achievement for completing the whole thing without dying. So anytime you die in that one, you're going to need to back out or stop before it gets to that screen. Then later on when you need to complete those scenarios where you can't miss any prompts, you need to make sure to be exiting out so that it doesn't count a death at that point. So this is the movement system. When you get control of your character, you can hold down the right trigger and you can initiate a dialogue. Uh, either you can talk to yourself about new info or you can talk to others. Hitting the left trigger will bring up a location switch, in a sense, where you can switch locations. Sometimes this will actually switch characters as well, like it did here. I switched to the little girl that's in the vehicle, not just uh, my character moving to that area. There is no full 3D movement in the game. All you can do is swap to a new location where you have a fixed camera perspective. It sucks and thankfully Telltale doesn't do this anymore. But yeah, you switch locations, you look around, you don't see what you really need. So then you need to do left trigger and move to a new location and you gotta watch the transitions every time. It's cumbersome. I don't actually cover every single movement in the game, and for the most part, the achievement website doesn't either. So you're going to need to figure some things on your own, but somewhere there's a thing that you can interact with that will move the story along. So just keep at it. It's not too hard. And one more thing that is going to help immensely, turn up the goddamn brightness. Seriously, the default setting is horrendous. And unfortunately, every time you die and you're backing out of the game, every time you reload your game, you're going to have to do this all over again. I'm sorry, that's the way they designed the game. I mean, this is a Triceratops versus a T-Rex. Can you see what's happening in this screen? No, you want your achievements, right? So turn up the brightness and just make it easier on yourself. And this is the start. This is episode one of Jurassic Park the game. Uh, we're just going to keep track of the fact that we don't we can't die in this thing if you do die you still have a chance to recover just make sure you exit the game 
and go back into the game and load your saved game. And uh, that should prevent you from losing that achievement. And uh, there's one sequence where we can't mess up, but that is when we're hacking bushes. Uh, Welcome to Jurassic Park is the first achievement. That's basically for completing the prologue. The second one is going to be in scenario two. This is where you're the little girl looking through the binoculars. Uh, this is looking good. Uh, there are a total of 12 things that you will need to find. Uh, that little dinosaur there in the bush, that's the second time you will find it. You need to click everything else before you click on that dinosaur, which means we need to find this pile of poop. Uh, the dinosaur itself will be the 13th item that you, that you will click. So just make sure you've looked at everything, and uh, when you look at the dinosaur for the second time, uh, see, I'm just making sure, nothing else, I've, I've already clicked on everything over to the left and so on. And there we go, there's our achievement. It's kind of nice to see the achievements pop up as I talk, isn't it? I know, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. This is Scenario 3. Uh, Dodgson will be pleased is the one we're going after. To complete the scenario, all you gotta do is you go to the office, you look at the phone, uh, go back to Miles, who's the other guy that's accompanying you, talk to him about the passes, uh, when he talks to the worker on the phone, you steal the passes. Afterward, you need to come up with a story that will uh, give your uh, give yourself a backstory. Um, there's actually several different ways you can do it. Just don't pick um, that you're an ele electrician and that your machete is fake. Uh, if you pick that, then you will actually die. Uh, the guy will pull a gun on you, and you'll have to redo the scenario. Again, you just exit out of the game and then load your save if that happens, and it won't count. But, uh, yeah, just pick electrician and say that your your machete is a tool, and that'll work. Or a plumber, and your machete is used to kill rats. This is the only uh, sequence where you have to get all the timed button presses right. You're simply alternating between X and B. This is scenario four. Uh, you will be prompted just before this scenario starts that you need to uh, hit all the time button presses. On PlayStation 4, uh, excuse me, I believe it's going to be circle and square for you. You're just going to alternate, alternate between the two as long as you get gold. Uh, you're a hacker, you get the achievement. That's for not missing any button presses in that sequence. And here we go, this is still episode one, scenario five, leftovers. Once you get to Nedry's vehicle, you're going to move the light to the left of the screen, and you're going to make that dinosaur go into that tunnel. Then you need to travel down, uh, remember left trigger in order to choose the hot spot, then you're going to pick the picture that shows the East Dock picture. Uh, we're going to go down there, and if you look into the cave, uh, just kind of tilt your camera up, and you should get the X button that's highlighted. Hold that down, and you will discover Nedry's Pass. And then that will give you the achievement for Leftovers. This one's actually missable. Make sure you get it, or you will have to replay the scenario. There you go. This is in scenario six. This is uh, the first dinosaurs on our tour. Uh, this will be a series of button presses. Just follow the guide on uh, xboxachievements.com. Uh, swap out commands for PlayStation 4 users, although you probably have your own site where you can find the correct ones as well. It doesn't change, it's always the same, just make sure you don't die. You can mess up, but sometimes messing up will result in death, so reload if you do that. Leave without us. This is World's Best Dad. This is a missable one. You must use exact dialogue choices for uh, three questions that you're going to get in Scenario 7, 9, and 12. In this one, we're going to pick Let's Talk. We are in Scenario 7. I've been working so So hard. when you get that option, uh, right trigger to pull up your dialogue tree, just pick Let's Talk. I think you can actually pick a different one as well, but just pick Let's Talk. The second one that we are going to pick is She's Overreacting. That's in reference to your mother. Um, in the game, not in real life. Um, it, it could be both, but that's what we're going to pick for now. This will continue a little bit later on. Here we are in Scenario 9, but what about Scenario 8? Well, don't worry about it. 
Uh, this isn't a 100% walkthrough. Uh, you can figure out your way through. Just make sure your characters don't die. Get the little girl to the uh, electrical shed, then get the guy there. And uh, just make sure none of the characters die. You're okay. See, I didn't get a gold in this section, but I'm still going to get my, my other achievement. Uh, there's also another conversation with your little girl inside. It didn't end up recording for some reason. So you need to answer her with buck up and then maybe. Those are the two things you need to do in Scenario 9 uh, with that conversation. Don't forget. Good, honey. Just, just so World's Best Dad is going to take a break for the next two scenarios. Our last conversation isn't going to be until Scenario 12. But here we are in Scenario 10. This is Perfecto uh, sp Spanish, Inglesia. So as the little girl, we want to pick Usted when we are given the choice. Then she needs to pick Necesita. Necesita. And then uh, El Descanso. El Descanso? Usted necesita El Descanso. You're going to tell her to rest, and that's it. That's what you need to know for Scenario 10. And here we are, Scenario 12. This is it. This is World's Best Dad. This is the final conversation that you are going to have with your little girl. Uh, that at least it matters where what you pick. And uh, so when she's hanging like this in this exact uh situation you want to pick don't be stupid Jess, you're not thinking just pick it be... there you go and then there's world's best debt i know 10 gamer score that's it but uh, as long as you've answered all three of those conversations correctly you will get that achievement at this point in the game good and now we got to make sure we don't get killed damn no don't worry that's that's totally scripted but like i said uh if you end up dying which is what's going to happen to me here if you mess up a button press make sure to back out of the game and reload and after some button presses later you're going to be done with scenario 12. again make sure to be using xboxachievements.com or ps4 trophies uh to have the right guide to be using for those time button presses uh, you don't have to do them perfectly if you as long as you're getting gold you should be pretty safe um, in that case, but make sure you don't lose a character because we're going to be getting life finds away. That's for completing all 12 scenarios within episode one and not losing a character or not dying. You saw me actually die just a little bit ago. Um, but as long as you exit out of the game and then reload back into it, they should not count. Uh, but this is an admissible achievement. So make sure you get that 60 gamer score. There you go. Or whatever the equivalent is on PlayStation. And let's move on to the next. And here we are in episode number two now for Jurassic Park The Game. And this is turning out to be a little bit of an endeavor. Uh, episode two alone is 17 minutes long of footage that I got. So uh, let's get to it. It's just taking longer than I thought. But this is, well, this is actually clean up. This is for the Jurassic Park The Intruder achievement. That's just for completing uh, episode one. And that's what we just did. But here in episode two, uh, there are technically no missable achievements, but some of these require you to have no mistakes during attacks or action sequences. So just make sure to uh, re uh, to exit out of the game and then reload your save if you fail on those particular sequences. And we will go over those, so don't worry. In fact, for episode two, uh, there's only achievements for not making any mistakes during sequence five, seven, and eleven. And then there's two other achievements, finding the DNA sign and then uh, eavesdropping on a sequence eight. Um, boots on the ground, you get automatic, along with nearly everything else. So here we are, episode two. Uh, this is scenario three. That's right, there's nothing for scenario two. Uh, for medicinal purposes, we just basically need to help Nina treat her wound. So once you get control, you're going to want to switch to the dad. And then you're going to want to interact with the lady and ask her about her wound. Normally there you go. I work with animals, but I am very well trained in first aid. I and there you go. There will be some dialogue and then you will need to switch back to the daughter. You're gonna need uh, because she to won't let infection. him uh, actually touch him, which is usually what happens with females in my uh, predicament. Uh, but I'm on YouTube, right? I mean, that's just what happens to us. Or maybe men in general. Just by the way. What? So once you get to her, or once you get control of her, you're going to want to use the right analog stick and hold right all the way over until the screen stops moving. Keep, keep going. 
See, now we got control of her. Because she won't let a man touch her. Come on. God damn it. Move it over. There you go. All the way and then uh, right bumper. And then that's where the berries are. Yeah, they tried to make you work for it, are but... the berries you need? See, bring them here. All you simply need to do is, uh, well, you don't need to do anything. You've already right. technically on, interacted with it. Berries. It's auto-saving. Uh, already. You basically just give them to her and, uh, sh you get your achievement automatically. Gracias. Um, de nada. She's a good kid. Yeah, her temperament is really all over, uh, in the game. She goes from being like, oh, thank you, to... Uh, get away from me. It's my time of the month. I don't know. It's Stop Okay, going. for the next achievement just calling my boyfriend uh, We're in the same place same episode same scenario But you as the little girl you're going to want to make note of the radio And uh, then you're gonna to want to switch to your dad and then have him Keep on talking to the lady which is going to antagonize her and then you are going to get to do a little uh, alternation between two buttons to get over to the radio and grab it. Hey, um, I, I know it seems like I might I might be skipping a little bit. Like, why didn't I let it play out as I was actually switching to the dad? But quite honestly, the radio conversation takes a minute or two, and I'm trying to cut down on the time I use as much as possible. I can't speed up uh, video footage while using uh, Upload Studio, unfortunately. But I wanted to make sure you guys saw me actually get the achievement. I meant see me get it. I am a retard. I am sorry. I just said that. Me and my dad were supposed to have been rescued. There's this woman with a gun. I think she's You would think she would at least walk away from the other lady a little bit further to go pee. I mean, any woman that I know that has to pee out in the woods, uh, they go out there a little ways. I mean, we're talking like a quarter mile just to make sure you can't find them or their pee. Uh, but yeah, so this is just calling my boyfriend. That's all you got to do for that. Calling my boyfriend? You'll need to use the controls to make the uh, the weak signal on each side vanish, and then you push the button prompt, obviously, to activate the radio and actually make the call. And then at the end of this, then you will actually get the achievement. See, there you go. So this is, now we are in the scenario 5 fight, you need to make no mistakes, which basically just means that if you miss a button, press exit out of the game. If you die, uh, just exit out of the game. That's all you gotta do. As soon as you see the little red X appear on your screen, that means you've lost your gold and you just need to keep on uh, retrying it until you get all. There's usually a one or two auto saves during a fight, so you don't have to do the whole thing all over again. But that's where you get uh, get it off me, and then you'll also get the achievement that way for finding the kidnappers trail which you kind of already did earlier but you can't miss this but it does pop up after the fight couldn't find any sign even though it's still credited towards scenario 5 should be popping up here any second now and see there you go the next one is a little bit of an ordeal so let's uh let's get to that you realize we're headed straight towards a cliff Okay, so this is another easy one, but we're in the area where we're going to need to do some explaining. But this is, uh, you must be this tall to ride. So you're going to want, once you get control or once you see that screen that you just saw, press left on the D-pad. And this will make uh, Jess, the daughter, move to another area, which is what's just happening right now. Now all we need to do is once we get control, use the left analog stick. Go to the left. We want to get that board to highlight right up by that sign and there you go hit x and boom you got your achievement for finding the uh what is it mr uh anatomy whatever he's called but you'll get your achievement okay so this is the hard part use the achievement website in order to get to this part you'll have to use the crane and open up the uh power box and whatnot but uh this is the part where you can follow their directions exactly. 
or you can do whatever. Uh, we need to get all three of the numbered cars in order and in a row. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Y once, then we're going to analog stick, go back. We're going to hit Y again. Analog stick back again. Uh, you can figure this out on your own, but this is the pattern that they have, uh, which I'm actually going to have to add some to. Uh, you hit Y again. Now it's going to be right stick forward. Aha! It works! Okay. That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, yeah, whatever. Now we're going to hit Y twice. If you exit the game at this point, you have to do this whole section all over again. And I believe it's forward again. We're gonna hit Y again. We're gonna write analog stick back twice. The main trick is uh, remembering that you can actually have four cars it looks like you, go, you can only fit three, but no, you actually can have four that are stacked up uh, right here. Uh, we're going to hit Y twice again. We're going to go back once. We're going to hit Y again. Uh, right stick forward this time. Forward. Forward, dumbass. There you go. Now uh, then we're going to do Y again. And then we're going to do forward again. And for some reason, the website actually stops there, and it doesn't go any further. So I'm going to add those instructions right now. So you can see the video here. This is to complete the Rough Riders. Uh... We're basically going to rotate to the open one that we have. We're going to stick the number three car in there. And we're going to stick uh, that one in there simply because we can't, uh, uh, we can't pick, you know, what else. It's the only one that we have open slots in. Oh, that's what she said. So uh, why am I even doing that in this thing? Uh, uh, as you can see, we're trying to get no two number car two, which this is why we stuck it here. Yeah, like I said, uh, xboxachievements.com, the page for this that shows how to do it, um, it's missing some commands. I'm not exactly sure why. So we're just going to put the number two car in, and then all we need is the number three car, and then we will be good to go. I know, I know, this is annoying, and like I said, if for some reason you back up, uh, just just load the other cart and like I said you're following what I'm doing remember you can have four stacked up and uh, this way we're just gonna put the number three cart in the first position slot and like I said um, you know if if you at any point you've messed up the order and you want to go you're gonna have to redo this whole area all over again uh, including uh, well you don't need to find the sign because obviously that was for just the achievement but you're going to need to get to the toolbox and move the crane and then get to this point where you can repeat it again. So you can probably figure out on your own, like I said, the, the real key, um, like I said, just keep watching this video and you'll see what I did in, in addition to what the achievement website did. What are you going to do if the rescue team But uh, But yeah, the key is knowing that you can stack up to four cars. That, uh, that should really help you out. Not worry about the... Oh, yeah, early therapy. Okay, so That's unfortunately, exactly. these two achievements didn't actually show up on my screen, but this should be for Bone Shaker. There's another one for Rough Riders. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Rough Riders? No, no, after finding the DNA sign, yeah, because Rough Riders pops up after Bone Shaker. Bone Shaker is when you're actually on the ride and some Velociraptors attack. I did it, I got my achievement, but unfortunately when you're trying to use the, uh, the, the DVR for a game system like the Xbox One, quitting and, and exiting a game and then restarting it multiple times, it doesn't always kick in. So that's unfortunately what happened to my thing. Uh, so I didn't get it recorded. This is actually a scene from the following 
uh, scenario. But yeah, just when you're riding the rails uh, on the train car thing, uh, I mean the amusement ride, make sure you don't make any mistakes, and then you'll get that achievement and another one. And this is for dropping Eve. so when you're in this scenario, you will be able to switch to the guy. You want to help? And you're going to want to go back to the helicopter and listen to the entire conversation between Dr. Sorkin and Jerry, or Gary, or Larry, who, who cares? Yeah, this is what happens uh, every time, I, I think I've said it before, but yeah, every time you restart, it resets the brightness. That's why it's so dark. Uh, you can pick never mind. All you want to do is just listen to the conversation. If you pick never mind, then you'll just go to this screen. This conversation literally will last about four minutes. So put the controller down, make a sandwich. As you can see, I upped my brightness and, uh, and it eventually will pop, but that's what you need to do. Uh, when you gain control of the dude, go back to the helicopter and listen to the conversation. I'm using the speakers and their sounds. So this is episode two now. Now we're in scenario nine. I heard that, Curtis. Uh, nope, that's a reference to Spoonie. Uh, this one's just called I Heard That. So this is you must heard the dinosaurs out I'll using the speakers. It when we're ready. And uh, you basically need to rotate them around. So what we're going to do is just follow this. You need to do X and B. Once you highlighted them, you want to activate speakers. Uh, it's right trigger to pop this thing up. So we're gonna talk to Jerry, there we go. Dr. Harding. And then we want to activate the east mating speakers. So up there. I need you to activate the east side speakers, please. East side, okay. And then that will incite them to do something. Yeah, I know it's a little glitchy, but man, what are you gonna do? This is from 2010, I believe. So it's, yeah, it's been a little while. This is before they started doing their Walking Dead and all that stuff. I believe this is after they did. Yeah, these people are going to talk. That's why I'm talking to you guys right now. But this is why. This came out after the Back to the Future game, which actually played more like an adventure game. So this is kind of the hybrid of not doing a straight up adventure game with inventory and trying to have a good story. But they kind of failed on the good story part. As far as I'm concerned. So here we go. Now we get to pick. We are going to do Y and A. So interact with the Y. She will automatically turn off the other ones. And now we are going to go down to A. You only have to interact with the stuff I'm telling you to. You don't need to undo stuff. She's automatically doing that. And then we want to hold down the right trigger. And then we want to... Uh, Call up Jerry again and tell him to activate the West food Dr. speakers. Harvey? Yeah. And then I'm actually going to make a cut because uh, this took another two minutes of a conversation that I saved for you. So on the last one, we're just going to pick the B button. Uh, that That's what I picked. I'm sorry it didn't pick up uh, the prompt for the B button, but that's what we Dr. picked. Uh, that's all yeah. you have to pick. Just hit B. Hold down the right trigger. Let's talk to Jerry again. Now we are going to tell him center danger speakers. Activate those. And then all the creatures will leave the pen. And you'll get your achievement shortly after the last one gets outside the door. We're almost done. I know it's it's been an ordeal. Maybe you'll be a behavioral Trust me. Recording footage and having to do all this is much more of an ordeal than it should be for you guys to play through it and just get your achievements and move on. Ah, this and so here we go. We're coming up to the last achievement. Unfortunately, the two last achievements of the scenario did not get recorded on screen for me. But you basically need to get uh, what are they doing here. That's uh, no mistakes in this particular action sequence and Jurassic Park the Cavalry for completing the episode. You see that autosave right there? Um, if you make any mistakes after the autosave, you can always reload and it won't count as missing anything. So just keep that in mind. If you see that red X ever pop up on screen, then you need to pause the game and exit out and then uh, re uh, reload your save game. And then you can keep trying 
uh, ad nauseum until you eventually get it perfect. But yeah, anytime you see one of those red X's go on. Because sometimes your character will die, sometimes it won't. But see, I messed up there. So, I didn't get killed, but I need to pause, exit out of the game, reload my save, and try again. This is episode 3 for Jurassic Park, uh, the game. You're, You're welcome. welcome. So here we are in episode 3. Episode 3 does not have any missables, um, at least according to the Achievement website. I don't know why they necessarily say that, because if you get shocked while picking up the antenna in Scenario 1, well, you can miss that one technically. I mean, they're, they're not given to you automatically, but whatever. They say there's no missable ones, but Scenario 1, we need to make sure not to get shocked by picking up the antenna. Scenario 2, we need to pick uh, certain dialogue choices uh, exactly. And then we need to not make any mistakes in the attacks that are going to happen in Scenario 5, 7, 8, and 9. And we will cover every single one of those. Uh, that's my job. One of the first ones is watching the uh, the helicopter crash, and you'll you will literally get the achievement here. I think we're okay. You're right about here. Right during the opening cutscene, basically. And there you go. That, those poor people. That's the achievement we're gonna get, uh, basically right away. Episode three. We're still in scenario one. Uh, so you need to get off of this water tower, and you're not going to be able to figure out where to go. But that's where you pull the left trigger and realize, oh, there's a second location. I can actually go to the top of this thing. We want to grab that thing. Uh, you can hit the B button if you want. It'll tell you basically, hey, you're going to get elect electrocuted if you try to mess with this thing. So we're going to pick a right trigger and mention to the doctor... See, it's even flashing for you, or shaking up and down. Uh, and then we want to pick the uh, turn power off. Can I do that? I don't know. Uh, yes, she can. So the doctor will tell you the difficulties of turning it off. We're going to push down on the D-pad, because that will switch us to the doctor. And then we're going to push Y. And then we need to switch back to the man. I want, I want to call him Grant, but I know that's not his name. Because it's not the guy from the movie, obviously. That would be pretty cool, but whatever. So then after we switch to the doctor... And then we hit Y with her, remember? I told you this. Okay, I've switched the beacon lights. Now we need to go up on the D-pad, and then we need to hit the B button at the exact time in order to pick it up. Okay, I screwed it up, but and I paused the game, but you can do it yourself. Shaving cream myself. You mind and here we are in episode three, part two. Uh, this is going to be two achievements. Uh, Art of the Deal, which is going to be that we need to convince Yonder with the minimum number of choices. So we need to pick... Oh, where we are. Uh, embryos, be careful. You need to pick these choices exactly in order to get it from him in the fewest amount of possibilities and then we will also get the achievement hatching a plan uh, afterward for uh, completing the sequence or ultimately getting our goal either way I know they talk and I you can't skip their dialogue I'm really sorry you're just gonna have to uh, pull through it with me uh, together that's what she said and then uh, I bet he's greedy. You're gonna pick that next. There's a lot of money in it for you if I get those embryos to my contact before they. So go yeah, out. I am not. Uh, oh, like, then tell him a story, sell it. That is the next choice. Come on, lady, pick it. You turn that over to Injay. You get it pat on the back. I know it takes a little bit of time, but it's achievements, right? You only want to do this one time. And as you're completing the game, as you go through, it auto-saves. If you replay a section, uh, it's not necessarily going to auto-save for you. Uh, is Chivalry dead? That's the next choice. It doesn't matter what they're talking about. The dialogue is really insepid. And then... Must I reveal my daughter? That is the last choice that will give you the art of the dead. 
I need the money to get her out of Which the makes ghetto. us, uh, like I said, we're convincing him to sell the canister with the minimum number of choices. So ultimately, he's going to get convinced to sell it. It's just going to take longer, that's all. And then we also are going to get hatching a plan because we got Yonder to agree to sell the embryos. Uh, there's Art of the Deal, that's the first one. That's for getting the dialogue choices correct. And then we will get hatching a plan here. Any second now. And I can't take this friggin' dialogue any longer. Seriously, I can only play an episode at a time of this game. There's so much yelling at each other in episode three. I'm gonna need to take a like a day break from this the game after this. Okay, there's hatching a plan. Told you. Moving on. So this is uh, Andale Ariba. It's not Andale. It's not a place in Wisconsin or something. It's a uh, episode three, uh, scenario five. This is basically getting through the T-Rex chase without, uh, with escaping flawlessly. We can't make any mistakes on this. As you can see, I'm loading in uh, because I made a mistake. Because that, that little up or down maneuver right there, it was really hard to see on screen. The prompts are really small. But uh, like I said, as long as you see that thing and it stays gold in the upper right corner, you're good to go. But obviously, if you see a red X, it's going to immediately drop to silver. But there we go. Andale Ariba, because that's what the mouse says. Thanks. And you got your achievement there. This next one is scenario seven, where we need to sneak up to the canister without alerting the T-Rex. You're going to need to alternate between B and X. Just push it at the correct times. And you'll be okay. But you can't make any mistakes during this section. So if you see a red X pop up, you need to get out. Like that right bumper action right there, that's not actually on the xboxachievements.com uh, roadmap. Uh, pushing the Y button still is, but yeah, it's not there. So make sure to, to look what's on screen. That's going to give you green lit. That's getting the canister without alerting the T-Rex. And then we're also going to get the achievement, don't drop the babies. That's for recovering the canister. Just overall, so... Thanks. There we go. Two more oh, achievements, and Scenario 7 yes. is done. Moving on. So here we are. This is the raptor fight with the big dude. Can't make any mistakes during this. This is during Scenario 8, so it's the next one. Just to make sure if you screw up or you get a red X, you back out of it. As you can see, we're still gold in that upper corner, so that means that we have hit all the prompts correctly. Uh, for the most part, I've actually gone down to silver and then gone back up to gold before, but just make sure that uh, you stay gold, you should be okay. But yeah, you'll know when you see a red X. Um, just just be aware of it, and that will give us the achievement for Raptor. show is over. Laura, you are my new favorite Which is just fighting a Velociraptor with no mistakes. Uh, that's all that is for Scenario 8. Holy crap, Oscar. Did you just and see, there we go. This way. Come on, and here we go. This is in scenario nine now, still in episode three. This is for surviving the raptor attack in the tunnels. And then we you know, that's going to give us stopping the stalker achievement. Then we're also going to pick up pipe dream, which basically means we can't make any mistakes during this raptor fight itself. Uh, so, you know, you gotta keep everything gold. Once you've tapped that Y button, though, the uh, then you're done I've never seen with the before. attack itself. It, it's the sequence, like, see right there. Uh, that's the raptor chase. That's stopping the stalkers. That's technically for that, but... Uh, and then there we go. Yeah, we also get Pipe Dream. I'm sorry. It actually does pop up right away. Um, but you will have an additional some button presses that you need to make in order to move on. And this is the way out. This is where the big dude is going to sacrifice. Um, you don't need to do this perfectly, but you need to make sure that he doesn't die before he has a chance to open it up. I messed up several times here because I missed that right bumper and up. And you just need to, you can make a mistake or two, as you can see, I actually did it with gold. And that will give you the achievement for the way out. Uh, but yeah, he's gone. Uh, that way they don't have to animate him walking around anymore. 
essentially that's that's why he's he's out of the game. And then that way they don't have to pay the voice actor for episode four. And uh that uh, essentially gives you the achievement, but the sequence will continue here. As you can see, there's no more, you know, gold up in the corner. That means it's not, it's not really counting this as part of the sequence. But you're going to have a few more button presses you need to uh, do. Sometimes you can mess these up and it doesn't really matter. Your character will just bumble around for some reason. Like here, it's auto-saved. I messed up there. I go down to silver, but, I mean, who cares? It's not part of any achievement. And I shut the door. And this is going to bring us right into the end of the sequence, actually. This is only ten scenarios long. Again, the exclamation point, that doesn't mean I messed up. Only a red X means you messed up. That just means the game interrupted the action itself. Victim. Is Daniel and then here we go. This is, uh, he's gonna get mad, he's gonna pull his knife on the doctor, and that will end Scenario 10, Jurassic Park, The Depths. Achievement will unlock for finishing Episode 3. And then we are going to move on to the final episode, Episode 4. That's right, it's only four episodes. You guys deserve all the achievements you get from this game. There was a lot of bad dialogue, a lot of people yelling at each other for no reason, and hugging. For no reason as well, but we're almost there. We're gonna make it. Woo! We've made it to episode four, the last one for Jurassic Park, the game. Let's get all of those achievements. Unfortunately, things are gonna get a little bit tougher here. The uh, action sequences are gonna be considerably longer now. Before, you only had about maybe seven to twelve moves that you had to do to complete an action sequence and get your gold uh, ranking with no mistakes. The first one we got to encounter has 24 moves, and the final one has at least 30. Kind of depends on how many button presses uh, you count toward that total or not. And there's a few other things like making sure we get all the flares in this first section. Um, but yeah, make no mistakes for scenario two. We got to light all the flares in scenario three. Got to talk to Nina a whole lot in five. Man, and then make no mistakes in scenario 9, 10, and 11. It's a lot of work, but I'm literally going through each one. The first one here, we just need to get done talking to Billy. He's going all crazy on us. And yeah, he is essentially being made into the villain, or one of the main villains. Yeah, it's one of those games where basically all the character models that have been created end up turning into the bad guys so they don't have to create any more characters. But we, we just need to keep talking to Billy at this point. Uh, there's no right or wrong conversation to get through it. At some point he'll say, okay, she's all yours or whatever. And uh, then we continue from there and that will give you, uh, what is it, the episode 4 scenario 1 achievement yonder, more like Exploder. And there we go. So here we are. We need to get three flares for a scenario coming up. I believe it's number three or something. So the first one, after you gain possession of your characters, you want to go back to, um, what is it? It's not Grant. I keep wanting to call him that. It's, uh, it's Jerry. But you're going to find a flare on top of a locker. You want to grab that. You need that. In order to exit out of this area, you need to bring up the conversation wheel and then pick, uh, away from the vents. uh no we should go. Off, and that will actually make you leave this area, but you need that flare. If you don't have it, you can't get all the achievements. Uh, more specifically, you're going to miss the Maybe missable one. Going. As soon as you say, let's get going, you will confirm that, and then you will leave sure. the area. And now we got the big long fight sequence of, like, 24 sequences. So this attack sequence, the thing to remember is that if you do it perfectly and you get the flawless achievement for making no mistakes, if dinosaur den flee, you're okay. You got the flares. But I will show you the exact uh, moments that you pick up both of the flares. That's the one for Nima. As you can see, it auto saves really shortly afterwards. And then at the very end, you will get the one for uh, for the other guy yonder. You will see the B button. Uh, prompt right here make sure to hit that right there and there you go now you got all three flares 
Like I said, if dinosaur, then flee. If that achievement pops up, that means you got gold on that. You made no mistakes. You're okay. You got all the flares. Uh, you also will get the Trodon. That's for just completing this section. Oh yeah, I didn't get them both back to back together. If you miss a flare, see the red X? You see it autosave shortly afterward? Well, it it's too late by that point. The autosave already triggered, and uh, you won't be able to replay. If you try to begin the episode all over again, it will erase your save and start you from the beginning of the game. You need to finish the game first, and then you're allowed to go back and replay certain scenarios and whatnot. And in this case, we'll need to begin the episode again. But, uh, but yeah, we have to beat the game first before you can go back and correct your mistake. Sorry, that's what it is. The nice thing about the long action sequences is that it does autosave after every three or four moves, so you want it to completely do it from the start. This is scenario three. This is the final intersection. In order to uh, get here, you wanted to pick the right intersection and then uh, the left intersection. And then once you're here, you need to uh, pick all three of your characters. We're going to pick Jerry first here. Uh, we're going to left bumper to light up his flare. And then uh, I believe you just have to make an observation of one of the points of interest down there. And then it'll autosave automatically for you. And then now we're going to pick uh, Nima. No, no, not the doctor. Not the crazy doctor. We want Nima. All right. And now we're going to light her flare with the left bumper. Like I said, if you have to redo this, it's okay because, you know, replaying section one isn't too bad if you've already done it. Uh... The button presses aren't so bad the the second time around, but you can't re if you need to replay multiple scenarios at a time or something that's linked together, you have to begin the episode all over again, and that's what I ended up having to do because I missed that flare prompt, and it auto saved really shortly. But yeah, all we're doing here is we're just we're, we're switching to all three of the characters. We're uh, looking down so that we can light the flare with the left bumper. And then, uh, boom, we get our achievement right there. There it is. So, yeah, it's a lot of work. Just make sure you get that time button press right or else pause and back out of that game quick. So this is I Know How to Blueprint, or I Know How to Read a Blueprint. Um, this is still in Scenario 3. This is after we lit all of those flares. We simply need to... Uh, uh, pick the Y button and then do right on the analog stick. Then we're going to pick the B button and then we're going to do right on the analog stick too. That basically means we're crossing them off. We're going to pick X could be here. and then do right analog stick to the left because we want to actually choose that one. And then we're going to pick A and we are going to right analog stick to the right. Okay, so that is the one you need to choose sure? that will end this sequence just got to confirm yourself and Then I'm boom positive. you should get another achievement Within a few seconds here. give or take matches our surroundings. Any moment. Come on. Let's get this thing done people Okay, there we go. There's the friggin achievement. All right moving on to the next uh, scenario. We're not that far. No, Pete Oh dear God! This one. This is Finding Nemo. We need to go through all the dialogue uh, choices in Scenario Five here. So every time the dialogue option comes up, you need to be picking the left option. Don't pick uh, listen. Don't pick uh, anything else. Uh, we don't have time or enough talk. Don't pick those because that will end the sequence. And you also need to, dear God, this woman won't shut up. This is literally a seven and a half minute talk with her. Like I said, when the prompt comes up, make sure you analog stick over and you keep picking them. If you don't pick them right away, um, or if you take, well, if you take too long to pick the option, you will miss the opportunity to ask her that question and you will need to beat the game in order to come back and replay the scenario. So, yeah, you actually need to be picking. You can't just leave your controller alone for that seven and a half minutes, just about. You need to keep on analog stick over to the left and keep on picking each item that comes up. If, uh, if you don't click on it, then she'll kind of move on to the next conversation. 
And, uh, yeah, you'll end up missing it. But, yeah, it's long. It's dumb. These people don't know how to write a story. I'm sorry. But here we go. Moving on. Little thirsty by now. Here we are in episode 6. This is the achievement all together now. This is after your group gets back together after being separated for a little bit. It takes several minutes into the sequence before uh, the achievement unlocks, so shortly after the doctor gets shut behind the doors here, you'll get your achievement. And then all we got left of the game is really the uh, a few more talking sequences, but for the most part it's the three big, long, quick time event sequences we gotta go through as well. So, yeah, well, we'll talk through those. Uh, really Autosave is your friend, though. Paleozoic, huh? Well, most of the specimens here aren't really from the Jurassic period anyway. Yes, thanks for pointing that out. You and every fan has been doing that for two decades. This is for the achievement of doing uh, Scenario 9 perfectly, uh, mosey on out of there. So, this starts with alternating between pressing uh, B and X a couple of times, then you'll get an autosave, then the girl will get her tank stuck, and you'll have to do a bit of tapping and whatnot. It's not too bad, don't feel bad if you need to pause the game, and uh, we'll make sure to up your, your brightness, of course. That really helps. And then also don't be afraid to pause in order to uh, see what the next sequence is going to be. Uh, but with autosave engaged, you should be okay. Uh, but this doesn't move too fast. There's just a lot of inputs you got to do. And when you're at the end, make sure you do not push A right here. You want to push X instead, because that is the correct choice. You're not going to stop that thing with one little frickin' uh, harpoon, of course. And then there you go. This should give you the achievement. Well, that it did for uh, mosey on out of there. And then you will also get uh, Life's a Beach, because of course every game has to make a reference to Life's a Bitch. It's just what they do, apparently, but they can get away with it, because, oh, it's a beach, it's not the actual word, yay. And you'll get that for just completing the swim, which is the name for uh, Scenario 9. And next... And now, Scenario 10, we have the fight with Yonder, Yoder, whatever his name is. This is not a lot of button presses that you're going to have to do, but they are fast and they are harder than anything else in the game. They're actually even harder than the last final fight that we got to do with the T-Rex. So, as you can see, I missed one there, just, you know, and my ranking went down to silver. Just back out because you have to do this flawlessly like the others. So, but you will have only about three or four prompts at a time you have to do before it auto-saves, like right there it auto-saved again. But uh, that, that knife section is, is the hard part because you got to do a uh, left and right bumper. You got to hold them and then push X at the right time. I was doing it a little too early. At first I didn't know I needed to do left and right bumper and hold them in. So, but you'll you'll get kind of a feeling for it, but this is as bad as it gets in the game. They're they're quick. Uh, the amount of time you get to push the buttons are very small, but uh, but you you get like three auto saves during this entire fight. So the, it's kind of frequent. Uh, I believe in you. Uh, yeah, I know that's from uh, Naruto, uh, and Naruto. What? I, I'm sorry. I still got the old way of saying his name because that's the way the ads were. But there you go, once you get to this point, uh, you automatically will fail this. Oh, it's not go. part of the sequence, so so don't worry about trying to get this. Uh, at this point, you've got your achievement as long as you didn't make any mistakes, as long as that autosave uh, is working for you. And now we will move on to the T-Rex. These This is a 30-move sequence, but, uh, but first we got to get to first of the two different endings. Yeah, that's right, there's uh, multiple endings. It's only two of them, and this actually happens really quickly in the scenario, so we can get the other one fairly quick. But, uh, but yeah, you gotta pick between the Barbasol can and the girl. Uh, it basically just choose the fate of Nima. If you pick the can, she'll get killed, and you get the achievement right away, so whatever ending you want to see, uh, make sure you pick that one first because once you get the other achievement you can just go and uh, No, I'm not going to show you the whole sequence of all 30 moves you need to do against the T-Rex Remember it does auto save after every three or four moves so you won't have to really complete or replay long sections of it and It's not as bad as that fight with Yoder anyway, so 
<laughs> when dinosaurs ruled the earth. You have to say that because that's what happened in the movie when the little the banner fell down. Anyway. But yeah, and there you go. That's for You Can't Container. That is for doing the fight with no mistakes against the T-Rex. And now we're going to go back and get our alternate ending. You can actually replay any scenario after you've beaten it, but you might need to beat the game first in order for you to use the replaying scenarios thing. So going over to episode 4 from the main menu, we're hitting Y to go to scenarios. And now we can actually replay the scenario by selecting it and picking A. You can do this with any achievement, but you don't get auto saves when you're replaying a scenario. Um, if you want auto saves, you need to begin the episode over completely. And any achievements that are related to multiple scenarios you need to go through, like that flare, because you need to go through scenarios one, two, and three to get that flare achievement if you missed it. In that case, you got to begin the episode over again. But uh, yeah, if it's self-contained uh, achievement that's on a single scenario, you can do that. But when you begin episode, you get your auto saves back. Here we are, we're back again. I, I skipped some of the cutscene stuff. Like I said, this part happens pretty much right away. You just have one or two button prompts and now you were back right where we need to be and we're gonna pick up the other achievement that we need for the ending. So yeah, if you wanna see everyone alive, just put it, pick X. But you get the achievement right away, so you don't need to stay in the game. You can literally back out now and look at all of your achievements, if you got them all. And that is it for Jurassic Park the game. It has been a long ride, but I enjoyed uh, telling you guys how to get everything done because I always wondered about the game. It's easy. I give it a difficulty of three because you can get a little frustrated with all these button presses and they're long and they're numerous sometimes and you're going to have to be exiting out and going back into the game. But hey, good job. You got your achievements. Let's move on to another game on Achievement Guidebook.